Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Natalie, if you are new here. I make all kinds of content, mostly home related, home decor hauls, room tours, DIYs, various things. And today I thought I would give y'all a few tips for decorating on a budget. So this is something that I've been kind of learning about and researching and watching other creators talk about because as I've mentioned before on here, my husband and I moved from a one bedroom apartment to a four bedroom house. And so we have a lot of space to fill and I didn't wanna just go out and spend a ton of money to fill this house. I've heard it takes time to decorate, it takes time to make it you know, your perfect home. But I also thought why go to a store like Pottery Barn, which I could never afford anyways, but people will go to Pottery Barn and just pick out a room and say, I want all of this and just put it in my house. And it's easy for them because you just see it and you click the button, add it to cart, whatever. But what I find is that it actually takes a lot more skill and hard work to decorate on a budget. Because so decorating a larger space maybe than you moved from previously or maybe it's your first apartment, it's definitely easier to do if you have a larger budget for it. I find that furniture and home decor tends to be kind of wasteful because if you think about buying new furniture all the time, then if the trends change or your style changes or you redo a room, you spend all that money on a piece of furniture and you're not gonna resell it for as much as you paid. So it tends to be kind of a poor investment in my opinion. And that is kind of why I have done a lot of repurposing. So this is tip number one is repurpose things that you might already have or that your family already has. So our both of our families, Josh's and mine, are both planning on downsizing soon-ish. And so they had some pieces that they don't want to take with them. We thought, you know, we don't care what it looks like. We'll take what we can get. And so, for example, my mother-in-law had these two little end tables that she said were, I think, Josh's grandma's. And she's like, do you want these? Thinking I wouldn't because they were kind of an older style. They were more of like a medium toned brown. And I was like, yes, absolutely. So what I did is I just stripped the finish off into like a raw wood color and I have one in each of two of my spare rooms so I do intend to put one in the living room as like a side table once I have chairs down there but that's one thing I haven't found yet is chairs for our living room but point being I repurposed some old furniture from our family into a current style that I could use in my home. We also did this with my childhood dressers my parents actually refinished them for us so that they were a little bit more modern and so that we didn't waste an entire piece of really nice like ethan allen wood furniture so we refinished those i also have my mother-in-law had this little twin bed um it's really cute it's like a white wrought iron and i have it in my office as kind of a little couch or day bed is kind of the way that I made it up so that when I am working in here, I can sit up on the bed instead of at my desk if I want to, or I can lay things out on it for like flat lay photos or whatever. We also have Josh's mom's first kitchen table that she had at her first apartment. Um, we chalk painted it white. It was like a brown rattan, I think is the way you say the material. Um, it's like a medium brown with red and white checkered seats and we spray painted it with white chalk paint and then Josh's grandma actually recovered these seats for us so that they are a neutral kind of pinstripe, um, which I think is super cute. It's a glass top, which eventually I'd like to have a wood table, but it was something we were able to have for free. We got something out of their house and repurposed it for us and it works just fine. So we've had that actually since we were married, we had that table at the apartment as well. And I also did a makeover on a china cabinet. It was my mother-in-law's china cabinet she gave us and I painted it a matte black, I think it was milk paint that I used, um, which I have a video on that if you wanna go check it out, I will leave the link in the description. But that was another example of a piece of furniture that was in our family that we repurposed and made look totally different for our home just so we didn't have to go buy anything new. Okay, so number one tip is repurpose things. Either use them for a different purpose or change up the way something looks that is already in your family that somebody gives you. Same with something you might find at a thrift store you could repurpose as well or paint. Speaking of, tip number two is utilize antique and thrift stores. So for me, I kind of have certain things I look for in antique versus thrift stores. So in thrift stores, I'm often looking for furniture, decent enough furniture pieces that I could repurpose it and use. So for example, I found this little, 
it was a little brown nightstand with two drawers and it was, it's veneer. I don't think it's wood. Um, but it was like $9 or something. And I just gave it a good cleaning and spray painted the whole thing with a satin, um, spray paint in like a taupe color and then changed out the hardware on it. And it looks good as new and it cost me next to nothing. And it doesn't matter that it's not a solid wood piece because it's in a guest room. So it's not going to get used a lot, but it does fill the space nicely and it'll be used for somebody to set their phone on when they spend the night. So at thrift stores, I often look for furniture. I like to look at baskets. So I found this really great basket that is a dupe for one I've seen at Kirkland's for like, I think the one at Kirkland's was like 30 or $40. And I found it for like three bucks, four bucks. It's a flat basket that you hang on the wall and fill with greenery. It's so cute. Um, so I always look at baskets cause you never know when you'll find a real gem like that. I also look for, I haven't looked at textiles very much, but one time I did and I found this gorgeous knit blanket for, I think it was like $5 gorgeous and I have it in a basket that was also from a thrift store kind of spilling out and it's in our entry and I think it is so pretty. So I'm definitely gonna be checking the textile section more often now. I also always look for books in the thrift store um, to see if there's any neutral colored books that I could put out on display and decorate with. Um, also dishes, so if you do, I did floating shelves in my kitchen and I would definitely recommend looking at thrift stores for dishes for either open shelving in your kitchen or if you have china cabinet like I do and you want to decorate it, that's a great place to get kind of filler dishes, white dishes, clear dishes, things that um, you can stack and layer and make look really decorative. Antique stores, I like to look for more particular things. So one thing that I knew I really wanted was an old antique watering can. I wanted like a big watering can and I was either going to put it on the bench in our um, entryway coming in from, from the garage or in the dining room and I actually have it in the dining room on the floor next to a little old antique chair that I found at a thrift store and it's perfect that it's right by the door because my plant the one plant I'm trying to take care of at the time at this time is right outside the front door and so I can just have my watering can and walk out the front door water it and come back in and put it there and it's really decorative but it also serves a purpose and I found this gorgeous old galvanized metal and it looks like it has some copper on it it has like a two-tone metal look to it and I knew I wanted a watering can and I didn't want to find that at a new store or even I might could have found one at a thrift store if I looked hard enough but I thought it'd be really cool to have an old antique one so I found that there um I do look at furniture in antique stores because sometimes they have really good deals on pieces that don't need refinishing and so that makes my life easier at furniture in antique stores because sometimes they have really great deals on it but they also can really mark up the prices if you're not careful so I kind of usually have an idea of what I'm willing to pay for a piece. Um, an example of this is we found a really cute antique tea cart at an antique market. And I had been wanting a some kind of bar cart, coffee cart situation in our kitchen and living room area because it's all one big open concept. And I, have a, I had a little space on the wall that I thought would be perfect for something like that. And so when I saw this tea card, it was black, which would match our decor already. And it had all these really cute antique details. It was marked um, that it was antique. I think the lady said it was from like the 40s. And we got a good deal on it. My in-laws actually bought it for us, which was really sweet. But that was something that it was better priced than what a new bar cart or coffee cart would cost. And so to me, that's a no brainer to have something old and vintage and antique um, at a better price point than something brand new that doesn't have the charm and the story behind it. So I always utilize antique and thrift stores for various things. Just know what you're looking for before you go, um, have something in mind, and then it'll be easier for you to focus in. Cause antique stores, if you go in without a purpose, you could just buy all kinds of junk that you don't have a place for. So definitely have a plan when you go in. So number one was repurpose. Number two was utilize antique and thrift stores. Number three is take it slow. And this is the biggest piece of advice that I don't take. I have the hardest time with this piece of advice because I want to have everything done and perfect and show everybody my new home and be excited about it. But what I'm learning is that when you are decorating your home in the way that I am, which is affordably searching for hidden gems and trying to find good deals on things, that doesn't happen overnight. And you don't typically find things at one time that are 
all for one room. So for me, I just keep an eye out and find things that I know that I want in certain rooms and just fill in the room as I go rather than picking one room and doing the whole thing from top to bottom because it's not feasible when you're working with a budget, I don't think. I think people who renovate a whole room because they're, you know, they're designing it for a TV show or for a video or whatever reason, they kind of have a bigger budget. They can just get whatever they want without having to really dig for that good price. Um, so my advice would be, especially if you are on a budget, is take it slow. Don't buy things just to fill your house up. Make sure you wait on a good deal for the particular pieces you're looking for, whether it's furniture, decor, etc. Next piece, number four, have specific Pinterest boards for each room. So I have all of mine private so nobody can see them um, just because it's private to me that I want to like work through it in my head, what I want each room to look like. And this is important because you might think you're going to do one room in a particular color scheme or style and then you start finding things that are different than that style and that kind of veers you off track. So that happened to me. <laughs> with our guest bathroom i had this idea in my head that i was going to do it kind of a like rustic farmhouse style because the cabinets are dark brown because i wasn't able to customize that bathroom so i thought i'm either going to paint the cabinets or work with what i got which is dark brown cabinets and so i said i'll go with this rustic farmhouse so i was thinking black and and that dark brown and i'll try to insert some pictures of kind of what i was going for but then mm -hmm. But I also had thrown in just like gray bath mats in there because that was extras that we just had on hand. And then I saw this sign at Kirkland's and it was like a lighter wood, blue, and a little bit of black and white. And it looked great with the gray carpet I already had, the brown cabinets I already had, and the white um, shower curtain I already had. And I thought, Oh, I'm going with this. So then I started filling it with kind of the browns and the amber um, glass and uh, galvanized metal and like a but with a little bit of light blue as well. And anyways, it, it came together and it looks really nice with the cabinets we already have and the flooring that we already have, you know. So I kind of steered away from my Pinterest board in that case. But if that would have happened in a different room, it could have cost me a lot more money than it did. So just having your little Pinterest board plan can kind of help you stay on track. I know for me, it kind of did the opposite, but for a lot of the other rooms, it has really helped because then you can go back and say like, oh, I saw this, you know, I see this thing at the store. I really would like to put this in this room, but then think to yourself, is that what I envision this room looking like? If I have 50 pins of a room with a white bedspread and light wood furniture, is this, you know, navy bedspread really going to go with that theme that I had already taken clearly a liking to based on how many pins I have of the same thing. Okay, so having a Pinterest board for each room will keep you organized, help you realize what you don't need to buy because it doesn't fit into any style that you seem to like. So that's something that I've kind of had to learn the hard way is if, if it's not part of this cohesive theme that I've, I've clearly liked, enough to pin the same thing a million times then it's probably not a style that i'm gonna like for a long time okay my fifth and final tip is look for sales that sounds so obvious but for example at the thrift stores certain days they'll do half off certain color like ticket items so there's just one thrift store i go to where every day it's a different color that's on sale and so i try to buy things from that color tag the days that they're half off, of course. Um, Hobby Lobby always has sales. They always have a 40% off coupon regular price for one item. So never forget to look that one up. If you're at the store, it's just, you can Google it and find the coupon. Um, and then they rotate, they do half off like pillows and throws, usually when they do half off wall decor. And then they rotate that with um, various things. They do half off greenery and florals. Just never buy anything full price because you will get a good deal if you just wait on the sales, especially stores like that. Kirkland's also usually will do a 20% off your entire purchase every couple weeks or so. So if you like something there, I would also suggest waiting until they release that coupon. They usually get it to your email. So that is everything. I hope this is helpful. I hope that you guys feel encouraged to be able to decorate your home without spending a ton of money. Please don't spend a ton of money. I read in 
a book, an interior design book called Cozy White Cottage that I love, that book by Liz Marie Galvin. She talks about how it's hard to feel cozy in a space that you went into a ton of debt decorating. It's hard to feel comfortable knowing that, which I think is a great point. So, you know, do as best you can with what you have, repurpose things that were passed down in your family, maybe modify your style a little bit um, to be able to find things that are more affordable that you can use in your home to decorate it. And you can always buy things later as you know, as you're able to afford it. But anyways, I hope this was helpful. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more home decor videos, especially home decor on a budget. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.